What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to build a calculator with SwiftUI from scratch. So here's the app we're going to be putting together. It looks like a calculator as expected. And not only are we going to build a UI, but we're also going to make it functional. So here we're going to say 555. Let's go ahead and add, let's say, I don't know, 15 to it. Go ahead and uh, sum that up with an equal and boom, there is our results. And of course we have the other operations supported as well. So we'll say 75 divided by five and there is our number. So we're gonna be putting together uh, this whole thing from scratch. It's a pretty good primer for anyone getting uh, ready to dip their toes into Swift UI. So let's get started by destroying that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's jump right into the project. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and we're gonna create a brand new project right here. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS. Go ahead and pick that. Give your project a name. We're going to go ahead and call it Calculator. Make sure your language is set to Swift and both your lifecycle and interface here are set to Swift UI. Go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. We'll toss it onto our desktop. And first things first, we're going to expand our Xcode window. I'm going to hit resume on the right hand side to load up our preview. And once that decides to load up, we're gonna jump right into it. So let me expand uh, the code side here so we have a little more room to work. And let me also hit this drop down to pick a little bit of a more modern device. Let's go with the 12 Pro Max and let's start building out our calculator. So this is a bit of an impulse video. So let's see, uh, let's see if we break anything uh, along the way. But first things first, what we wanna do is start off uh, by adding a Z stack. And a Z stack, we're gonna add a bottom layer of a black color. And that'll give us a black color right off the bat since the background of our calculator will be black. You'll see that we have these uh, the safe area being accounted for at the top and bottom. So we're gonna say uh, edges, uh, let's see, edges ignoring safe area and we wanna ignore all of them. So the black background takes up the whole thing. Next up, we're gonna want a vertical stack and this vertical stack is gonna basically hold uh, two things. First, the text. Uh, display of the calculator. And then the next thing it's going to hold is uh, our buttons. So let's think about how we want to actually uh, create our buttons. So before we do that, let me just go ahead and add a text here. And let's just go ahead and say it's a hard coded zero value to start off. I'm going to go ahead and make it bold. We are also going to go ahead and give it a nice larger font size, maybe 50, let's go with 52 perhaps. And we see we get our text here on the right, but we also want it to be uh, aligned to the right hand side. And we also want it to be, let me go ahead and fix that system font of size 52. We also want it to be a white color. So I'm gonna say foreground color is white. And to get this to be on the right hand side in terms of alignment, we're gonna wrap this whole thing uh, into a horizontal stack. I'm gonna drop the text in right there. And we're just gonna put a spacer uh, in here right before it. And the spacer will be basically pushing the text all the way to the right hand side. You'll see on the right that it's basically touching up against the edge of the screen, which is kind of ugly. So we're gonna add a padding modifier to our horizontal stack and that'll give us a little bit of padding like so. Maybe we want this to be even a little bigger. All right, looking good. So there is our text display, pretty simple. Let's go ahead and talk about the actual buttons, which is the other, of course, pretty important co component in a calculator. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create an enum of a calc button. And this enum more or less is going to have a list of all the different button types. Now you might be wondering why we want this and you'll realize in just a moment. So bear with me here. So let's go ahead and create a case for each of the, uh, each of the types of uh, buttons we want. So I'm gonna say, we're gonna want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll need a zero a plus, minus, multiply, divide, a decimal, a clear, and a percent, and maybe a negative. So those are all the buttons we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and quickly tweak these. So we'll say two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, that's not how you spell six. Six, seven, eight. I know this is pretty tedious, but just bear with me here nine whoops there we go nine we got zero what else did i say we want to add subtract we also want to divide and multiply 
uh, multiply, and we are going to want an equal, of course, as well. And let's think about what else we need. We want a clear button. We want a decimal. That makes sense. And what else did I say? We want a percent. And I think we want one more, which is going to be a uh, negative positive. So I'm just going to call it negative, just like that. So there are all the different buttons that we want. We're going to also say this enum has a raw value type of string. And now in our view itself, we want to have a two dimensional array, which is going to represent the grid of buttons in our calculator. So what do I mean by that? So here I am going to say led buttons, and this buttons is going to be a two dimensional array of calc button. That is not what we want. There we go, calc button. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, create each of these inner arrays with the buttons that we want. So uh, let's, let's just start with the numbers because they're nice and easy. So this one's going to be seven, eight, and nine. And before I go ahead and add the other ones, let's go ahead and start um, creating the buttons here based on this array so you guys can uh, get an idea of what we're doing. So uh, right below this horizontal stack, what we're going to do is we are going to do a for each uh, over buttons. And let's see, we're going to have an ID. And this ID will be self. And this is going to be row in, because keep in mind that buttons is a two-dimensional array. And then in each of these, we're going to do another for each over the row. Once again, ID is going to be backslash dot self. And this is going to be button in, or you might want to even call it item. We'll call it item in. And each of these guys is going to be a button with an action and the actual uh, UI for the button itself. So the UI is going to be a text. We're going to say uh, item dot raw value. And let me go ahead and give it a little bit of styling. So the first thing we're going to want is a frame. And let's go ahead and hard code these. So let's say the height is 70. We're going to adjust how we uh, figure out the size here in just a moment. The width is also 70, uh, not, let's see, height and width. I believe that's the order of parameters. I might be lying to you. Let's try width and height. All right, so there is that. We're also going to go ahead and give this a background color. And I'm going to go ahead and stick with color.orange. We're going to say this has a foreground color of white. And let's also go ahead and give this a corner radius of 35 to get a circle. Now, it looks like our preview freaked out here. So let's go ahead and hit resume to get it updating. And we should see three buttons just like that. So we see that they're vertical, whereas 7, 8, and 9 should be next to each other. And clearly, the text on them is not what we want. So bear with me. So in each of these rows, what we want to do before we have this for each is wrap this thing inside of a horizontal stack because we want these three buttons to be next to each other. So in theory, this will be seven, eight, and nine. Below this will be um, four, five, and six, and then one, two, and three. But we also want, let's get rid of my antivirus pop-up. We also want the text on this to be correct. So how do we do that? So right now we're using string here in our enum, which is um, basically using the case as the raw value. What we can do is we can go ahead and assign this, each of these, to a particular string itself. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. I'm actually just going to copy and paste it for all of these, and then we'll just tweak it at the end. All right, these are all one. Let's keep on going. Whoops, that's not what we want to do. And like I said, this is a little tedious, but it's uh, fairly straightforward. So go ahead and just, just change the uh, string for each of these. It's giving me errors because you can't have the same string for each of uh, each of these cases. So just go ahead and add all of your uh, strings here appropriately with the given uh, enum value. So we'll say eight, nine, this one is zero. This one will be a plus. This one will be a dash. This will be, I'll use a backslash for divide. This will be an X for multiply, equal. I guess for this one, we'll say AC for all clear. Uh, decimal is a dot. Percent is this guy and negative. I think this is like a minus slash plus. And now if you take a look on the right hand side and we hit a resume up here because our canvas doesn't like to keep up with our coding, we now see seven, eight and nine. So first thing um, that I notice here is the text size is a tad bit small. So let's go ahead and uh, just bump this up. So I'm going to say font size or just font rather, is going to be system font with a size of, let's try 32 and see if, what that looks like. That looks pretty good. 
And now let's go ahead and extend our two dimensional array here to have all of the other rows. So I'm just going to add a comma here and copy and paste this a few times. So let's see, we want this one to be one, two, and three. This will be four, five, and six. Now we want a fourth row as well. Keep in mind, this one is going to be, I guess, clear uh, percentage or clear negative and then percentage. And let's go ahead and hit resume over here. We should have many more buttons once our preview updates. All right, we've got a bunch of buttons. Now there's a couple of issues observed right off the bat. First things first, um, these stacks and buttons are super close to each other and uh, the buttons are small. And we also need another fourth column of the uh, actual operators. So let's go ahead and add those. So this one, actually we want one more row too, now that I think about it. So let's go ahead and add one more row. In the last row, we're gonna have the zero, the decimal and the equal. And in the ones above it, what we're gonna go ahead and do is add the operator. So the first one is going to be add. Next one is going to be subtract. This one is going to be, I guess, multiply. And hopefully I didn't miss any. This one is going to be divide. There are all of our buttons. Go ahead and hit resume. You should see them all render just like that. This last row is supposed to have three. We'll take a look at adjusting the positions momentarily. But let's go ahead and fix the, uh, the sizing and as well as the uh, color of each of these because we want different colors for things. So let's take, a, let's take a look at the sizing first since it's pretty simple. So we wanna actually calculate the width of uh, our buttons based on the size of the screen. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is right in the view, we're gonna create a function and this is going to be called uh, button uh, width. And we're gonna say, go ahead and pass in the item, which is going to be the calc button to return the width for. And we're just gonna return a CG float. And before we actually use this item, let's just hard code this. What we're gonna say is take the entirety of the screen and it's bounds dot width. And from this, we are going to subtract a little bit of buffer for each of the columns. So we're gonna say minus, five times 12, we're gonna have a buffer of 12 that I'll add in just a moment, divided by four. So bear with me while I explain that calculation. For this horizontal stack, we're gonna add a spacing of 12 between each of these buttons. That'll uh, push everything horizontally apart. We'll also need to add a bit of spacing between the height of each of these. So uh, let's see, we can probably add spacing to uh, this vertical stack. The other thing you can just do is actually add a padding modifier to uh, your horizontal stack. So I'll say padding modifier for bottom is three, and that should uh, vertically space your rows a little bit apart from each other. Go ahead and hit resume. And let's see what that looks like. Everything should move up. There we go, looks looking better. And let's take a look at using this function now for button width. So here we had hard coded 70 for the button width, which is not what we wanna do. So we are going to say this is self dot button width, whoops, self dot, button width, and we're just going to pass an item, which is the item we're getting in our loop. And you'll see that the width starts to look appropriate, but now everything is smushed vertically. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to actually take this whole thing and I'm going to create another um, function in here, which is going to return uh, our button height. So we can say func button height, and this is going to be the same for every button. So we're just not going to have a parameter and we'll simply just uh, copy and paste that in there. And the height is going to now be self dot button height, just like that. And things will start to look appropriate once you go ahead and hit resume on the right hand side, hopefully. All right, looking much better. So the other thing I notice here is uh, it's not a perfect circle anymore. So what we wanna go ahead and do is uh, for the corner radius, we wanna take the button width function, drop it in there and just divide it by two. That's how you're gonna go ahead and get that nice uh, circle shape. So if you go ahead and uh, drop that there and we just click out of it, everything should be a nice circle now. So looking better, we also have um, way too much space at the bottom here. So we wanna push everything down. So the way we can do that is pretty trivial. You can go ahead and uh, add an alignment on your vertical stack, or you can use the easier way, which is just add a spacer to the top of there. And that'll push everything right to the bottom uh, of your vertical stack. So this is starting to look good. Let's take a look at how we're gonna get our colors to be appropriate because 
we want the numbers to be dark, the operators to be this orange, and these guys up here to be, I believe, like a light gray. So all I'm going to really do is we're going to add a computed property into this enum. And I'm going to go ahead and call this button color. And it's going to give us a color back. And all we're going to do is switch on self. And if we are going to be uh, you know, any of the operands, we're going to go ahead and return orange. If we're the all clear percent or negative, we'll go ahead and return the light gray. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and return the dark gray. So I'm going to say, if the case is add, subtract, uh, what else, multiply, or I guess divide, or even equals, we are going to return dot orange. If we happen to be the clear, the negative, or the percent, we're going to go ahead and return a light gray. And the way we're going to do it is just wrap color and say light gray. And if there's any other case, which should be the numbers, what we're going to go ahead and do is return a dark gray. So here we're going to go ahead and say return a color. And we're going to create a custom color with RGB values. So we'll say uh, this is RGB. And we're going to say 55 over 255.0. This is basically just a dark gray color that I've looked up beforehand. Uh, let's see what this error is yelling at me about. It should go away. All right, so now that we have this computed property here, instead of hard coding each of these buttons to be in orange, let me actually go ahead and close this left panel so we have more code room. Instead of uh, hard coding each of these to have a background color of color.orange, we can say item.button color. Uh, and I believe that's what we called it. Let me go and double check. Sometimes autocomplete with Swift UI really doesn't work. So let's see, button color. And here we have also said item.button color, which should be our item. Let's go ahead and hit resume the right hand side. And all of our colors should update. Boom, look at that. All of our colors updated, and we're starting to look a lot more like a calculator. So the next thing we want to go ahead and do is if you actually hit the little play button here, um, you'll notice when you tap on each of these buttons, you don't really get um, the nicest looking um, uh, event. Basically, nothing's happening. Uh, so what we want to go ahead and do is link this up to an action that's going to actually change the text up here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, create a function. And this is going to be did tap. And it's going to take in once more a button. And this will be a calc button. And we're going to go ahead and do something with this. But we also don't want to hard code our display text up here. We have it as zero. We're going to say this is a value. And value is going to be a property which is going to be wrapped as a state up here, which will be zero by default. Now, if you're not familiar with state property wrappers, it basically allows you to control the various states of your view as things automatically change and update um, through that property. The other thing I'm going to do is bump up this font size because I feel like it still looks a little small. So go ahead and hit resume. You can hit uh, pause for this live preview over here. And this guy should get a little bigger, the zero. Let's also go ahead and fix the size of this zero button because this is centered and it really shouldn't look like that. So the, what we're going to do for that is pretty simple, actually. So when we calculate the button width, we pass in the calculator button. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is we're going to say if uh, the item is a zero, we want to calculate a different size. So bear with me while I do some quick math here. So the first thing we're going to do is copy and paste this, and we'll, we're going to need to tweak these numbers. So the uh, first, we need to subtract the amount of uh, padding between the columns. So there's one, two, three, and four. So instead of five times 12, we're going to subtract four times 12. We want to go ahead and uh, uh, still divide this by the appropriate number of columns. And what I'll go ahead and do now is I believe we want to go ahead and multiply this by two. So the zero takes uh, two of the spaces for the columns. So go ahead and do that. And what you'll see is that the zero will get wider. And both of these guys, the decimal and the equal sign, will start and align up with the columns here. So that is basically how our UI is going to look. Uh, I don't know if I'm being picky about this, but I still feel like the system size here for the zero is too small. So we're going to make it 100. All right, that's that's probably big enough. Let's actually go ahead and get these buttons hooked up. So 
what we want to do is first and foremost in this button whenever somebody taps on it the action we're going to call it is self dot did tap we called it and we're just going to pass an item pretty simple now in this function we want to do two things we want to discern basically did the user tap on a uh, a number or did they tap on an operator or did they tap on clear so i'm not going to worry too much about um, the percent and the negatives and i think i'll omit the uh, decimal as well but you'll get the general idea so what we'll do here is we are going to switch on the button that was tapped if they tapped on any of the operators we're going to need to go ahead and uh, store you know which operation is being uh, done so let's go ahead and grab all of those just put a break there for now uh, if the user tapped on uh, a number um, but instead of doing number i guess what we could do is if if they tapped on clear we want to do something or if they tapped on one of the ones that we're not supporting at the moment which is decimal negative or percent we're not going to do anything otherwise this leaves us with a number what we're going to do is we are going to get that number by saying number is button dot raw value keep in mind this is a string and what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say if self dot value is zero we're going to go ahead and say uh, the value becomes number uh, otherwise, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add the number to the end of the current value. We're going to say self.value equals, and I'm going to interpolate the string here. So we're going to say self.value is the current value, and then at the end of that string, we're going to tack on the new number. So it's a little confusing, so bear with me here. Uh, and all clear, this one's pretty simple. We're just going to say self.value, once again, it goes back to zero. And we'll do these uh, operators in um, just a quick moment here. So go ahead and hit this play button. And if you start tapping on these, if I hit eight, you'll notice it turns into an eight. I can say eight, seven, nine, clear. So there is our uh, calculator working pretty easily. So keep in mind, um, you're going to need to adjust the font size as you get into a larger number so that doesn't happen, because um, that's not really appropriate. But you guys get the general gist. So let's actually go ahead and talk about these actual operators to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, which is actually the functionality. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we are going to create another enum up here. And this is going to be called operation. And what we'll go ahead and do is put four cases in here. So this is uh, add, subtract, multiply, divide. Let's see, divide. I really can't spell it today, divide and equal. And we're gonna have an initializer. Um, and I guess we don't even need an initializer in here. What we can go ahead and do is uh, we can put a property on our actual view. And this guy can be called, uh, I guess, current operation. And this is going to be uh, operation. Uh, optional and maybe um, what we could also have instead of making it optional so we don't have to unwrap it we can actually add another case in here and call this none and we can say by default that this operation is none and what we want to go ahead and do is you probably know already once we tap on a button we just want to store um, you know which thing is uh, which operation are we doing so we're going to say if a button is add we can go ahead and say current operation becomes add uh, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see, that is add. So let me go ahead and say self.current operation and make sure it's not going to yell at me. Let's see, it's yelling at me because cannot assign to property self is immutable. I think we should make it a var. That would be a great idea. All right, let's see, var. So we also want this to be a state, I guess. I'm not sure why it's immutable. It shouldn't be immutable. Let's see, this is none. It is definitely a var. Let's see what's going on here. So self.current operation is, should be able to make it an add. It's in a view, so perhaps we need to make it a state. Let's go ahead and make that guy a state up there and we should be able to assign to it just like that. And let's go ahead and just do a bunch of else ifs here. This probably isn't the cleanest way to do it, but we're just gonna stick with it for the sake of time. This will be subtract, multiply, multiply, divide, divide, uh, and otherwise we want one more, which is going to be equal, equal, 
and equal. So let's think about what we want to do. So in each of these cases, as long as it's not the equal, we want to go ahead and actually reset the input value to be zero so the user can add the next number. So not only do we want to set the operation, but we want to capture the previous number. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we are going to add another state on here. And this is going to be var uh, running number. And by default, it'll be zero, pretty simple. And what we'll go ahead and do is if each of any of these operations occur, uh, what we want to do in each of these blocks instead of uh, ex except uh, equal is say self dot running number. And we want to go ahead and increment this by uh, basically whatever the integer value of the current value is. And keep in mind value on self is a string. And this guy is going to return optional, so we're going to coalesce it to zero. So we're going to basically add uh, to this, this running number whatever the value is for the add operation. And this is going to be different each time. So if the user types in four and then they click on add, uh, well, let's actually simplify this a little bit to start. Let's actually just assign this to be our running number. And I'm going to do this in all of these before I get ahead of myself. And if the user hits equal, what we're going to go ahead and do is a little different. So what we're going to first do is we're going to say uh, get current, which is self dot running number, right? Makes sense. And then what we're going to do is we are going to switch on self dot current operation. And we actually don't want to even do that. We're going to switch on that. And we're going to say, if the operation is add, go ahead and add uh, the values. And the other current value is going to be, let, uh, let's call this running value. And this one will be current value. And this one is going to, once again, be self integer from the value string, just like that. And let's see, let's make sure I do this correctly. What we want to go ahead and do is say self dot value is going to equal the current, uh, the current, let's see, current value plus uh, the running value. So we're going to say this is running value. This is current value. So we're going to go ahead and add these together and that'll update uh, the value string, thus updating our UI. So bear with me here. This has gotten a little messy. Uh, I will definitely go ahead and explain it all momentarily. Let me go ahead and get rid of this backslash. Let's go ahead and just add the other cases here for add, subtract, let's see, multiply and divide. And I'm actually going to remove equal from this uh, operation since whenever equal occurs, we don't really want to hold on to the equal. We just want to go ahead and you know perform the operation. And let's go ahead and change these. So for subtract, we want to say this is the running value subtracting current whoops, subtracting current. Uh, for this one, of course, we want to uh, go ahead and multiply, and the next one we'll want to divide. So that's multiply, and that's divide. So let's go ahead and hit Command B to make sure it's compiling first and foremost. Then go ahead and let's see, looks like we have an error here. Let's see what the problem is. So this is yelling at me that it needs to be exhaustive because we also need to take care of the case of none, in which case nothing happens. Go ahead and hit Command B one more time, and that should hopefully fix all of our errors. Go ahead and hit Resume on the right hand side, and let's let's see if this works before we perhaps make it more complicated. So hit the Live Preview button, and let's do eight. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Plus. We're going to say nine, and that did not work. So let's see equals ninety seven. So that is not correct. So let's try that one more time. Eight. And when I go ahead and hit plus, it should, it should set the value to be zero again, which it looks like we're not doing. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is at the bottom of this, we can say uh, if the button doesn't equal, if the button doesn't equal type of button equal, we're going to go ahead and say self.value gets reset to be zero. Let's try that one more time. Go ahead and stop the live preview, build, and go ahead and do that. We might need to hit resume a few times here so the simulator or our canvas updates. We're gonna do eight plus, goes back to zero, perfect. Nine, eight plus nine equals 17, which is correct. So it looks like that's working. Let's try to add to this. So we're gonna say plus three, 
17 plus three is 20. Boom, look at that. Let's try some more complicated ones. Uh, 81 divided by, uh, what the heck happened there? Uh, yeah, it should be zero. Okay, that's correct. 81 divided by nine is going to be nine. All right, that's good. Let's do five, seven, eight, nine, six uh, divided by 321. I have no idea if this is gonna be correct. I'm gonna assume that's right. One of you guys watching can check and tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. So this is all looking good. And it looks like the running calculation also works because we're basically holding on to the prior value. So if I keep adding, let's say a two to this, should keep going up by two, which it in fact is. Now let's see if zeros are working. So one problem I could think of is what happens if we keep clicking zero? Um, I guess we can't do that because it works by design, but let's see if I do two, zero, 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 looks like that works. So for the most part, we have most of our edge cases covered. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, certain things we need to fix like this text rolling over, but that's basically a calculator in a nutshell for the most part, it's like 150 lines. The one part I do want to review super quick is uh, the actual calculation. So our view should be fairly straightforward for everybody. We basically have a horizontal stack up here for the actual text display. We're using a Z stack for the black color, a vertical stack with two for loops for our buttons here. In the actual function to tap a button, we're basically switching on the type of button. And if it's a operation type, we basically hold on to the type of operation uh, as well as the current value, because that's the value we're going to apply the operation to, in this case, adding or subtracting or multiplying, dividing. And if the user hits equal, all we go ahead and basically do is uh, grab the current value and apply that operation to it. So um, we're going to either add, subtract, you know, divide or multiply. Down below, if the user hits clear, we just clear out the value, pretty simple. And this default is all of the numbers. So um, when any of, the, any of these numbers get hit, uh, if the value is zero, we're going to go, if the current value is zero, we're going to go ahead and just uh, assign value to be whatever the input number is. Otherwise, we're going to tack on the number. So keep in mind that tacking on the number isn't adding it, right? So in a calculator, you should be adding the number to the rightmost of the number you see here. That's why we ended up using a string to hold the value because it's kind of easier than, you know, doing the math with a number. Other than that, we have our calculations for the button height and width. And what we basically do here is take the width of the screen, uh, subtract the padding between each of the columns and then divide it by the number of columns we have. We have a special case for zero because zero takes up two columns plus a, uh, the padding for two of those columns. And actually one thing you can do to make sure this works is we can change our simulator drop down to, let's try something smaller like an iPhone 8 and see if that looks correct. And uh, you know, if it ends up not looking correct, you can always go back and uh, you know, tweak it to make sure that everything works. So let's try that one more time because our preview is not cooperating. All right, there it goes. I think it looked correct, I just saw it. All right, bear with it. Let's try that one more time. All right, looking good. So there is our uh, iPhone 8. One thing you might wanna adjust is the bottom of uh, the calculator here is kind of close to the edge of the screen, but yeah, our calculator is definitely working. I'm gonna put this code up on GitHub. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully this was a good primer in the Swift UI, not too complicated. Um, take a look at the code in GitHub. It's a really good place to get started with the calculator app. If you're new to the channel and haven't hit the subscribe button yet, definitely do so to stay up to date with iOS and Swift videos. Definitely smash that like button if you forgot to do that so far. Thanks again for watching. Looking forward to seeing you guys here on the channel for the next videos. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you in the next one.